a CD. All right, now we can get started. What's up guys and welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. Now last week I did a rebuild of my dreadfully slow and out of date home server that's been running since 2010 uh, and replaced it with an X79 Chinese motherboard and an E5 2650 eight core CPU. During that video, I promised an overview of FreeNAS install as well as getting whole home ad blocking working as well as a Plex install. This video right here is the FreeNAS install and you're gonna need that to go to the other video. So this is the first of probably a three or four part series. Again, I'm just trying the tutorial thing. We'll see how it works. Follow along with me if you can. Now to start off, you're gonna to wanna to go to freenas.org and download the FreeNAS ISO. And depending on your host operating system, you're gonna to have to follow an instruction set to get it actually onto an installation USB. Uh, in my case, I was using Mac OS X to install it onto the USB key. Uh, but if you have Windows, you're gonna need WinDisk 32 Imager or a couple of other utilities. Uh, same thing with Linux, you're gonna use DD. Mac OS X, you're gonna use DD. Uh, whatever your host OS is, follow the installation instructions to get the installer onto the USB. Once you've got this ready to go, let's get started. One thing I didn't mention is the other option you have is just burning the ISO for FreeNAS onto a CD drive and installing that. That is certainly the simplest method to go. Uh, USB is definitely the faster method. That's the one I recommend if you're able to get it working. But if all you wanna do is uh, throw it onto a CD and boot it up, by all means, go for it. So here I am in the BIOS for, uh, for my X79 board, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that uh, my USB drive is set up as my boot disk, and indeed it is. So we are going to save and exit, and it is going to load up the FreeNAS installer. All right, so we are at the FreeNAS installer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit install, and we are going to install it onto my SanDisk SSD. Uh, I happen to have a 120 gig SSD that I wasn't using. All you need is an eight gigabyte flash drive to actually install this. So if you'd rather install this and boot off of a USB flash drive, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna be booting off an SSD. And I'm gonna boot via UEFI. On the X79 boards, it seems to have a little bit less problems booting UEFI. You can boot BIOS or legacy mode if you'd like. Uh, and again, depending on what board you're actually doing this off of. Now we wait. The other thing to mention is I, uh, I mentioned in the last video that uh, I was gonna be converting my system over to ZFS. Uh, I would love to do that. Unfortunately, there is a problem with my particular RAID card where I cannot do a pass through for the individual drives. Uh, my RAID controller will only recognize the drives if they are configured in a RAID on the RAID controller. That's a personal limitation of mine. And again, I'm running SAS drives, so I can't just plug these into the SATA controller that's on this board. Um, so I'm actually not gonna be able to go through the ZFS setup. Uh, there's lots of tutorials out there. If you're interested in ZFS, I'm just going to be running off my hardware RAID 5. 10%, moving right along. I got to stop filming videos at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Installation finished, no errors reported. That's exactly what we wanted to see. All right, please remove the installation media and reboot the system. I think I will. Boy, I love seeing eight core processors with uh, hyper threading boot up. That's a lot of threads. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is all gonna be like five seconds for you guys. I gotta sit here and watch the dang thing boot. This is going to take a long time. Hey, there we go. All right, if you followed all the steps properly to install FreeNAS, this is what you should be met with. This is the console setup, uh, and it doesn't give you a lot of information, and nor does it give you a lot of options. Uh, the 
only thing you really need to take away from this is that IP address right there. That is going to be how you're going to access the console right now. So uh, give me about 10 seconds and I'm going to switch over to a, uh, a web browser here and we'll get through uh, configuring your first share. All right, so I've got Firefox loaded up here, and as you can see, I've gone to the IP address that was listed. In my case, it's 10.0.1.194. Uh, most home routers, you'll most likely be a 192.168.0. whatever your, your router happened to give you uh, through DHCP. Um, and by default, it'll bring you up a, a little login window here with root automatically filled in, and you're gonna wanna enter the password that you entered during the installation. And there we go, we are all set up. Uh, by default, it's gonna come up with the, uh, the initialization wizard. And I'm gonna hit next. And by default, it grabbed my one RAID drive, again, because I have a RAID controller with a RAID already configured. Mine just shows up as a single disk. If you are going to configure ZFS, uh, you, it'll bring you up with a ZFS configuration right here, or RAID configuration, software RAID, whatever you want to do. Uh, I am not using any uh, uh, domain configuration service or authentication service, whether it's Active Directory or LDAP. So we're just going to hit next. And now is when I'm gonna configure my share name. So I'm gonna name my stair, share storage. I know I'm real original. I'm gonna hit add and I'm gonna hit next. And this wizard right here is if you want uh, email notifications for any issues with your file server, uh, it'll, it can warn you about failed disks or network configuration issues or a number of different things. Uh, I'm just going to skip this for now because uh, again, your settings are gonna be completely different than my settings. Um, and uh, you're about to leave, pending all save actions, I'm gonna confirm. It's going to create my Windows share. It's going to create my storage volume. All right, before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and configure my network. And there's a network tab that's right up here. I'm gonna click on that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it what my default gateway is. Now again, yours is going to be different. Uh, again, if you're using a home router, uh, like a Netgear or Linksys or anything like that, it's most likely going to be a 192.168.0.1 or .1.1. Again, you're gonna to have to check your own network configuration for that. Uh, my home network happens to be a 10.0.1.1. And my DNS server at the moment is set up for the same. Now, if you're into this for the whole home uh, ad blocking, uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, your DNS server is likely gonna change on that, but for right now, it's the same as my, uh, my default gateway. Uh, I'm also going to give my, my uh, server a name here, and I'm gonna name it Craft Storage. And I'm gonna save that. Now notice that didn't give me a default IP or a, an IP address configured, that just gave me a default gateway and a DNS server. To set up my actual IP address, I'm gonna have to go over here to interfaces. And I'm gonna add an interface. Interface name, I'm just gonna name it RE0 because that's what the NIC is actually called. And I'm gonna say 10.0.1.5. Now you're gonna wanna check your local network to see what ranges you can actually put an IP address into. Uh, you can also go into your router and uh, statically assign uh, through DHCP an IP address if you'd like. Uh, again, you're gonna have to check your own network configuration. I, everyone's is different, so I'm not gonna make any assumptions on that. In my particular case, my IP address is, that I want is 10.0.1.5. And that's really all I need right there. So I'm gonna hit okay. Oh, sorry. It's not all, all there is to do. I have to choose a net mask. Again, for most uh, most routers, it's going to be a slash 24 or a 255.255.255.0 net mask. I'm going to hit OK. And at this point, my IP address should have changed. So the 10.0.1.194 is no longer valid. Valid. I'm going to go 10.0.1.5. And there we go. I'm going to log back in. And my hostname has changed, my IP address has changed. So now it is statically assigned on my network. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a new user that can actually access my share. And I'm gonna name my user Craft. Uh, you do need to enter a name. You know, and I'm gonna go and put my, my real name in there. And again, give it a password. Uh, for best practice, that should be different password than your root password. 
and most of the default options are good to go, so I'm just gonna hit create. Now if I go over to storage, I'm gonna select storage, and I'm gonna change the permissions to my craft user. And hit change. Now give me just one more second as I switch over to my Windows PC and I'll show you how the storage volume actually works. All right, we are connected up to my Windows box now. I know I've been jumping around machines on you here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, not ping, not pig, ping. I'm gonna make sure I can ping uh, the server on the IP address, and indeed I can. And I'm gonna make sure I can also address it by name. And indeed I can, excellent. All right, so in theory, I should be able to go to the network, craft storage, and storage. Excellent, okay. Um, now I entered craft as the username and a password that's identical to my Windows machine. And so my Windows machine is actually accessing it without a password. It's actually sending its Windows credentials through, uh, which is a really handy way to do it. But uh, I'm gonna just show you guys that if I go, uh, I'm gonna map a network drive in my computer, craft storage slash storage. And I'm gonna connect using different credentials, craft, and enter my password here. Make sure I type that in correctly, because I think I flubbed a key on this terrible membrane keyboard. Connect, and we have a drive. I should be able to create files in it, and indeed I can. So now the task is uh, restoring all of my files to the server. Uh, and uh, again, you can use this for whatever purposes you want. Uh, I'm also going to do a brief tutorial. I, I might combine this with the Plex setup or the uh, whole home ad blocking, or it might just be a two minute video on its own. Um, my Threadripper build, I've been using my file server as my Steam library as of late, uh, which means my Threadripper only has a 256 gig uh, uh, M.2 SSD in, in it. Uh, but I have most of my Steam library downloaded to my file server. Uh, so I can show you how to do that. So uh, if you have multiple machines shared on a network uh, that you only want to download like one copy of GTA 5 and then play it on multiple machines, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, anyway, that's probably going to do it for me for tonight, guys. Uh, I hope uh, this has been a real brief look at FreeNAS, but I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I'm certainly uh, open to doing more tutorials like this. Uh, give me some feedback on this. This is my first tutorial video that I've done. Uh, little news for the channel. Uh, I launched a couple of things today. Uh, the biggest of which is Patreon. I am now on Patreon. Uh, there's gonna be a number of perks that come with being a Patreon backer for Craft Computing. You're gonna get exclusive access to uh, my Discord channel. Uh, so if you wanna chat with me and all the guys who host Talking Heads with me, that's John, Steve, and Rhett. Uh, they are all members on my Discord channel and uh, we're open to asking questions or chatting or uh, giving advice or anything that you'd like on the channel. Uh, the other thing that's coming is uh, there might be some merch giveaways, there might be uh, exclusive offers or exclusive content uh, through Patreon. So please visit Patreon, uh, back me if you'd like. The other thing about Patreon is I'm not actually taking money from it like personally into my pocket to pay for my house and my lighting and stuff like that. Everything that I make from Patreon is going into a savings account and it's going directly back into the channel, whether it's for content for the channel or whether it's for equipment to support the channel, like cameras, lights, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I am personally taking no money from Patreon. You are literally supporting the channel directly. So uh, if you feel like doing that, if you want to give me some backing on that, I would sincerely appreciate it. Also be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate links, same deal there, every dollar I make there is going directly back in to support the channel. That's to support content or things that I need to keep this channel coming. Uh, upgrades in equipment, upgrades in lighting, upgrades in whatever thing, anything that you see behind me goes right back into the channel. So thank you guys for your support. Uh, it's been a lot of growth in the channel lately and I sincerely appreciate it. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, again, I hope you got something out of this tutorial. Let me know down in the comments if you think I can improve in any way or if there's anything specifically that I, I left out or I missed or that you didn't quite understand. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer that in the comments. Uh, but anyway, it's 1121 on a Thursday night. I have to work at 730 in the morning. So uh, I'm going to edit this video real quick and head to bed. Uh, again, I hope you guys got something out of it. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. content creation they said it's the glamour they said